Hello again everybody, we're still in Lisburn here in the city centre, or the, still the town centre and uh, just behind me there's a, a doorway and it leads into the old Friends Meeting House or the Quaker Meeting House this is a very old building in the town and just to my left there's a wall here and behind it there's an old Quaker burial ground that many people are maybe not aware of and for many many years, even after the, the, the Quakers, this, this hall has been used for the preaching of God's Word right up until relatively recent years. But the way back in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, there was a saint of God who lived in the town called Willie Collins. And he would have organised holiness meetings uh, in the town here back in the 1950s especially and would have invited preachers from all across the spectrum to come and preach the Word of God to believers. Men like Leonard Ravenhill, we've mentioned him over the last day or two, uh, and also the Reverend Duncan Campbell, who was so greatly used of God in ministry, especially in Scotland, in the Lewis Awakening, for example, from 1949 to 1953. I used to work with a saintly man, still, he's still alive and well, and we still talk from time to time. And whenever he was a young convert, he was only saved a year or two, he attended some of these meetings in the Friends Meeting House. The Reverend Duncan Campbell was the preacher. He had just really come back from the Isle of Lewis and had been relating right across the country at places like Bangor Convention uh, what God was doing. And this friend of mine was sitting in those meetings and Duncan Campbell was preaching. And he often relates the story that whenever the meeting came to a close, Mr. Campbell had concluded in prayer, sat down. They expected the organist to begin to play, but she didn't. In fact, nobody moved and they sat for 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Nobody knows how long because the presence of God had just come down and filled the place. And he said it was completely spontaneous. It wasn't manipulated. It wasn't announced in any way at all. But there's just all of a sudden this stillness had come down into the meetings. And that friend said it was a taste of revival. He was just a young Christian at the time. He said, I'd never experienced anything like it before. And I've never experienced anything like it since. Just the presence of God in those meetings. He said, it changed my life. Nothing was said, just God had come. And everybody that was there, he said, could testify to that. And he longs for days like that again. He says, this is what we need. Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Times when everyone will just know that the Lord is near because more can be done in a few minutes in God's presence and can be done through hours and weeks and months of preaching. We long and need for the presence of God again. Are we conscious of this in our services and our meetings across our land? We meet around the Word of God. We sing together oftentimes. We listen to testimonies. We listen to sermons. And all of those things are wonderful and needful and vital. But sometimes are we worshipping an absentee God? Is God really in the midst of his people? Do we really take time to consider who God is and to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, Psalm 46 and verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Let's take time in these days just to be still, to prepare our hearts, and let's really pray in these days that God will visit us and God will step in and change even the lives of Christians. Revival isn't so much a great move of God amongst the unsaved that results in that but primarily it's whenever God gets a hold of his own people and visits them in a special way and that's what we long for and that's what we need. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us.